Voltarine de Clare, Selected Poems and Essays. Part one, poetry. And thou too. The moonlight rolls down like a river, the silence streams out like a sea, and far where the eastern winds quiver, my farewell goes floating to thee. Like night when the sunset is fading, and star beams troop up in the skies through a cold, dark and lonely forever gleams the light of the poet eyes. And sometimes when I am weary, and when the path is thorny and wild, I look back to the eyes in the twilight, back to the eyes that smiled, and pray that a wreath like a rainbow may slip from the beautiful past and crown me again with the sweet strong love and keep me and hold me fast. For the way is not strewn with petals soft, it is covered with hearts that weep, and the wounds I tread touch a deeper source than you think it mine to keep. Down the years I shall move without you, yet ever must feel the blow that caused me a deeper pain to give than you will ever know. For the tears that dropped on my hands that night neath the mystical shining moon were a sacred dew consecrated there on the rose-altered heart of June. And the heart that beat against mine like a bird that is fluttering wounded sore, with its nest all broken, deserted, torn, will beat there forevermore. But the world moves on, and the piteous earth still groans in the monster pain, and the star that leads me points onward yet, though the red drops fall like rain. Ah, not to a blaze of light I go, nor shouts of a triumph train. I go down to kiss the dregs of woe, and drink up the cup of pain. And whether a scaffold or crucifix waits neath the light of my silver star, I know and I care not, I only know, I shall pause, not though it be far. Though a crucified life or an agonized death, though long or quick and sharp, I am firmly wrought in the endless thread of destiny's woof and warp. And I do not shrink though a wave of pain sobs over me now and then, as I think of those saddest of all sad words, the pitiful might have been. It might have been, it is not to be, in the tones of your swan's farewell, ring sadly, solemnly, deep to me, like the voice of a sobbing bell. I gather your petals and take them back to the dead heart under the dew, and crown it again with the red love bloom, for the dead are always true. But go not back to the sediment and the slime of the moaning sea, for a better world belongs to you, and a better friend to me. St. John's, Michigan, 1888 The Hurricane We are the birds of the coming storm, saith August Spies. The tide is out, the wind blows off the shore, bare burn the white sands and the scorching sun, the sea complains. But its great voice is low, bitter thy woes, O people, and the burden hardly to be borne. Wearily grows, O people, all the aching of thy pierced heart bruised and torn. But yet thy time is not, and lo, thy moaning, desert thy sands. Not yet is thy breath hot, vengefully blowing at wafts or lifted hands. The tide is turned, the vein veers slowly round, slow clouds are sweeping o'er the blinding light. White crests curl on the sea, its voice grows deep. Angry thy heart, O people, and its bleeding fire tipped with rising hate. Thy clasped hands part, O people, for thy praying warmed, not the desolate. God did not hear thy moan, now it is swelling to a great drowning cry. A dark wind cloud a groan, now backward veering from that deaf sky. The tide flows in, the wind roars from the depths, the world white sand heaps with the foam white waves, thundering the sea rolls o'er its shell crunched wall. Strong is thy rage, O people, in its fury hurling thy tyrants down, 
Thou meetest wage, O people, very swiftly, now that thy hate is grown. Thy time at last is come, thou heapest anguish, where thou thyself wert bare, no longer to thy dumb god clasped and kneeling, thou answerest thine own prayer. Sea Isle City, New Jersey, August 1889 At the grave in Waldheim Quiet they lie in their shrouds of rest, their lids kissed close neath the lips of peace, or each pulseless and painless breast, the hands lie folded and softly pressed as a dead dove presses a broken nest. Ah, broken hearts for the price of these. The lips of their anguish are cold and still, for them are the clouds and the gloms of past. No longer the woe of the world can thrill the chords of those tender hearts or fill the silent dead house. The people's will has snapped asunder the strings at last. The people's will, ah, in years to come, dearly, ye'll weep that ye did not save. Do you not hear now the muffled drum, the trampling feet, and the ceaseless hum of the million marches trembling dumb in their tread to a yawning giant grave? And yet, ah, yet there's a rift of white, uh, tis breaking o'er the martyr's shrine. Halt there, ye domed ones, it skates the night as lightning darts from its scabbard bright, and sweeps the face of the sky with light. No more shall be spilled out the blood-red wine. These are the words it has written there. Keen as the lance of the northern morn, the sword of justice gleams in its glare, and the arm of justice upraised in bare is true to strike. Ay, tis strong to dare, it will fall where the curse of our land is born. No more shall the necks of the nations be cursed. No more to dark tyranny's throne bend the knee, no more in abjection to ground, to the dust by the brave heart beat, stilled by the brave voices hushed. We swear that humanity yet shall be free. Pittsburgh, 1889 Ut sementem feceris ita metis to the Tsar on a woman political prisoner being flogged to death in Siberia. How many drops must gather to the skies before the cloudburst comes? We may not know how hot the fires ill under hells must glow ere the volcano's scalding lavas rise. Can none say but all what the hour is sure, who dreams of vengeance has but to endure, he may not say how many blows must fall. How many lives be broken on the wheel? How many corpses stiffen neath the pall? How many martyrs fix the blood-red seal? But certain is the harvest time of hate, and when weak moans by an indignant world re-echoed to a throne are backward hurled, who listens hears the mutterings of fate? Philadelphia, February 1890 The Dirge of the Sea Come, come, I have waited long, my love is old, my arms are strong. I would woo thee now with the wave kiss cold on thy pallid brow. Thou art mine, thou art mine, my very own, thine ears shall hear. My eternal moan, always near, thou'lt fill my lips in the bathing tear, where my sorrow drips. Thou, my king, forever behold thy throne, reign in thy majesty all alone. None, none wept for thee, nearing the verge of eternity. I, thy solemn dirge, will chant for I, why it is the wave merge into sky. I love thee, thou art my chosen own, thy heart like mine was cold as stone, thine eyes could shine like my blue waves fair, thy lips like wine, curved to kisses rare. Hard as my waves were the eyes that shone, and the wine is deadly, come, love alone, float, float on the swelling wave. Long is the hearse, wide the grave, thy pall is a curse from the fading shore, a broken verse from a heart wrung sore. Live streams wreck strown, ah, like my own, the words are low as a dying groan. 
The voice thrills so it might rouse thy breast with pity's glow. Wert thou like the rest, but thou, my hero, wert never known. To feel as a human, thou stoodst alone. Down, down, behold the wrecks, I strew the deep with these human specks. No faith keep with their moral trust. See how I heap their crumbling dust. I sneered in their faces, my own, my own, as they knelt to pray. When the ships went down, I flung my spray in their dying eyes, and laughed at the way it drowned their cries. And the shore they heard the exultant tone, and said, The sea laughs. Ah, I laughed alone. Now, now, we twain shall go, love locked, laughing so, the fools ye mocked with your tender eyes, the trust ye rocked with your cradling lies. E'en like these wretches, my own, my own, shall rot in clay, or crumbled bone, thou shalt hold thy way, day kissed and fair, where the wild waves play in the sun-thick air, my arms, my kiss, my tears, my moan, ye shall know for I, where we wander lone, love, love, thou wert like to me, thy luring gaze rolled relentlessly, the marsh light blazed to some human soul, down the darkening maze to ruin's goal. Ah, how ye crushed them, my beautiful own, like whistled leaves around thee strown, whirled the dead beliefs of each long-mourned life here. No one grieves, neither tears nor strife. Appeal to the sea, where its wrecks are thrown, thou shalt stand in their midst and smile alone. Laugh, laugh, O form of light, death hides thy faceless sight. The flowing tides of thy heart are still, yet erects thy brides, for it is my will, that that which on earth made thy heaven my own may strew around thy eternal throne, the gurgling sound of the dying cry, the gushing wound of heart agony. Were thy joy in life, now the sea makes known thy realm in death, thy heaven alone. Years, years we shall mix with me, Ye shall grow a part of the laughing sea, of the moaning heart, of the glittered wave, of the sun gleams dart in the ocean grave, fair, cold, and faithless wert thou, my own, for that I love thy heart of stone, from the heights above, to the depths below, where dread things move. There is not can show a life so trustless, proud be thy crown, a ruthless like none, save the sea alone. April 1891 I am, I am, the ages on the ages roll, and what I am I was, and I shall be by slow growth filling higher destiny, and widening ever to the widening goal. I am the stone that slept down deep in me, that old, old sleep has left its centurine trace. I am the plant that dreamed, and lo, still see that dream life dwelling on the human face. I slept, I dreamed, I wakened, I am man. The hut grows palaces, the depths breed light, still on. Forms pass, but form yields kinglier might. The singer dying where his song began in me yet lives, and yet again shall he unseal the lips of greater songs to be. For mine the thousand tongues of immortality. January 1892 Love's Ghost Among the leaves and the rolls of moonlight, the moon which weaves lace on the road white, among the winds and among the flowers, our blithe feet wander, life is ours. Life is ours and life is loving, all our powers are locked in loving, hearts and eyes and lips are moving. With the ecstasy of loving, ah, the roses, they are blooming, and the June air throbbing, tuning, sings of love's eternal summer, chance of joy, life's only comer, and we clasp our hands together, singing in the war, sweet weather, kissing, thrilling, with caressing, all the sweet from love's rose pressing, ah, so easy. Earth is heaven, darkness, shadows do not live like the rose our hearts are given, like the rose whose bloom is given to the sun gold and the heaven, not because it wills or wishes, but because tis life to give. 
Dreary, dreary, snow-filled darkness, heavy, weary, voiceless darkness, we have drifted, drifted, you and I, far apart as snows and roses, sea and sky, we have drifted, drifted, far asunder, any my lonely voice uplifted in sad wonder, heavy with its own sad calls. All your love was of the summer. All your love was of the summer, born to die among the roses, wither, scatter like the roses, leaving me the grey-browed comer, with the ashes on his forehead and the winter in his hair, with the footsteps slow and solemn going down the endless stair, joy is gone, and you, my lover, gone in other ways to hover, gone among the summer places, gone to seek for summer faces. Bright-faced joy was not for me. Born among the snows and pines, grey-faced sorrow was to be, Imaged in my mournful lines, love not born for cold and sorrow, only for the sweet sunshine I shall keep your face forever hidden in this heart of mine. In its light one spot will brighten, keeping fair the sacred tomb. Like old moonlight it will whiten, the inviolable room, like the moonlight it will whiten. Softly all the darkened room and the broken stalk may put forth memory's ghost of love's old bloom. March 1892 Life or death? A soul half through the gate said unto life, What dost thou offer me? And life replied, Sorrow, unceasing struggle, disappointment. After these, darkness and silence. The soul said unto death, What dost thou offer me? And death replied, In the beginning, what life gives at last? Turning to life, and if I live and struggle, Others shall live and struggle after thee, counting it easier where thou hast passed. And by their struggles, easier place shall be for others. Still to rise to keener pain of conquering agony. And what have I to do with all these others? Who are they? Yourself. And all who went before? Yourself. The darkness and the silence too have end. They end in light and sound, peace ends in pain, death ends in me, and thou must glide from self to self as light to shade, and shade to light again. Choose! The soul, sighing, answered, I will live. The Toast of Despair We have cried and the gods are silent, we have trusted and been betrayed, we have loved and the fruit was ashes. We have given, the gift was weighed. We know that the heavens are empty, that friendship and love are named. That truth is an ashen cinder, the end of life's burnt-out flames. Vainly and long we have waited. Vainly and long we have waited through the night of the human roar for a single song on the harp of hope or a ray from a daylit shore. Songs I come floating, marvelous sweet, in bow-dyed flashes gleam, but the sweets are lies, and the weary feet run after a marsh-light beam. In the hour of our need the song departs, and the sea moans of sorrow swell, the siren mocks with a gurgling laugh that is drowned in the deep death knell. The light we chased with our stumbling feet as the goals of happier years swings high and low and vanishes the bow-dyes or of our tears. God is a lie, and faith is a lie, and a tenfold lie is love. Life is a problem without a why, and never a thing to prove. It adds and subtracts and multiplies and divides without aim or end. Its answers are false, though false name true, wife, husband, lover, friend. We know it now, and we care no more what matters life or death. We tiny insects emerge from earth, suffer, and yield our breath. Like ants we crawl on our brief sand hill, dreaming of mighty things. Lo, they crunch like shells in the ocean's wrath, in the rush of time's awful wings. The sun smiles gold, and the plants white, and a billion stars smile still. Yet fierce as we, each wheels toward earth, and cannot stay his will. The build, ye fools, your mighty things, that time shall set at naught, grow warm with the song the sweet lie sings and the false bow your tears have wrought. For us a truce to God's loves and hopes, and a pledge to fire and wave, a swifter world to the dance of death, and a loud huzzah for the grave. Philadelphia, 1892 
to Mary Wollstonecraft. The dust of a hundred years is on thy breast, In thy day and thy night of tears a century's rest. Thou to whom joy was dumb, life a broken rhyme, Lo, thy smiling time is come, and our weeping time, Thou who hadst sponge and myrrh and a bitter cross, Smile, for the day is here that we know our loss, Loss of thine undone deed, Thy unfinished song, the unspoken word for our need, the unrighted wrong, smile for we weep, we weep for the unsoothed pain, the unbound wound burned deep that we might gain, mother of sorrowful eyes in the dead old days, mother of many sighs of pain-shod ways, mother of resolute feet through all the thorns, mother so strong, so sweet, low after storms, have broken and beat thy dust for a hundred years, thy memory is made just, and the just man hears. Thy children kneel and repeat, Thou dust be dust, thou sodden coffin and sheet and moth and rust are folded and moulded and pressed, yet they cannot kill in the heart of the world at rest. She liveth still. Philadelphia, 27th April, 1893. John P. Altgeld After incarceration for six long years in Joliet State Prison for an act of which they were entirely innocent, namely the throwing of the Haymarket bomb in Chicago, May 4, 1886, Oscar Nieb, Michael Squab, and Samuel Fielden were liberated by Governor Altgeld, who thus sacrificed his political career to an act of justice. There were a tableau, liberty's clear light shone never on a braver scene than that. Here was a prison, there a man who sat high in the halls of state, beyond the might of ignorance and mobs whose hireling press yells at their bidding like the slaver's hounds, ready with coarse caprice to curse or bless, to make or unmake rulers, lo, there sounds a grating of the doors, and three poor men, helpless and hated, having naught to give, come from their long-sealed tomb, look up and live, and thank this man that they are free again. And he, to all the world, this man dares say, Curse as you will, I have been just this day. Philadelphia, June 1893 In memoriam to General M. M. Trumbull no man better than General Trumbull defended my lead comrades in Chicago. Back to thy breast, O mother, turns thy child, he whom thou garmentedest in steel of truth and sent forth strong in the glad heart of youth to sing the wakening song in ears beguiled by tyrants' promises and flatterers' smiles. These searched his eyes and knew nor threats nor wiles might shake the steady stars within their blue nor win one truckling word from off those lips, no, not for gold nor praise, nor ought men do to dash the sun of honor with eclipse. O oh, Mother Liberty, those eyes are dark, and the brave lips are white and cold and dumb, but fair in other souls through time to come, fanned by thy breath glows the immortal spark. Philadelphia, May 1894 The Feast of Vultures as the three anarchists, Vellant, Henry, and Caserio, were led to their several executions, a voice from the prison cried loudly, Vive le anarchy! Through watch and yard the cry escaped, and no man owned the voice, but the cry is still resounding through the world. A moan in the gloam in the air peaks heard, the bird of omen, the wild, fierce bird, a flight in the night like a whiz of light. Arrowy winging before the storm, far away flinging, the whistling singing, white curdled drops, wind blown and warm from its beating, flapping thunderous wings. Crashing and clapping, the split night swings and rocks and totters, bled of its leaven. And reels and mutters a curse to heaven. Reels and mutters and rolls and dies with a wild light streaking its black blind eyes.
Bird, the bird of omen, the wild, fierce bird, a flight in the night like a whiz of light, arrowy winging before the storm, far away flinging, the whistling singing, white curdled drops, wind blown and warm from its beating, flapping, thunderous wings. Crashing and clapping, the split night swings and rocks and totters, bled of its leaven. And reels and mutters a curse to heaven. Reels and mutters and rolls and dies with a wild light streaking its black blind eyes. Far, far, far through the red mad morn, like a hurtling star through the air upborne, the herald singer, the terror bringer, speeds in behind through the cloud rags torn, gather and wheel a million wings, clanging as iron with a hammer rings, the whipped sky shivers, the white gate shakes, the ripped throne quivers, the dumb god wakes, and feels in his heart the talon stings, ruin, ruin, the whirlwind cries, and it leaps at his throat and tears his eyes, death for death as ye long have dealt, the heads of your victims your heads shall pelt, the blood ye wrung to get drunk upon, drink and be poisoned, on, herald, on. Behold, behold, now a moan is grown, a cry hurled high against a scaffold's joyce, the voice of defiance, the round, wild voice. The loud, wild voice whirled through the world, a smoke wreath curled, breath round hot kisses around a fire, see the ground hisses, with red streaming blood clots of long frozen ire, waked by the flying wild voice as it passes, groaning and crying, the surge of the masses rolls and flashes with thunderous roar, seams and lashes the livid shore, seams and lashes and crunches, and beats and drags a ragged wall to its howling retreats. Swift, 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 thwart the blood rains fall through the fire-shot rig of the broken wall. The prophet crying, the storm song sighing, flies, and groan under night's lifted pall. Swarming menace, ten million darts, uplifting fragments of human shards. Ah, white teeth chatter and dumb jaws fall while winged fires scatter till gloom gulfs all save the boom of the cannon that storm the forts that the people bombard with their comrades' as hearts. Vengeance, vengeance, the voices scream and the vulture pinions whirl and stream. Knife for knife as ye long have dealt, the edge ye wetted for us be felt. Ye chopper of necks on your own, on your own, bear it coward on, profit on. Behold how high rolls a prison cry. Philadelphia, August, 1894. Anarchist martyrs Auguste Valent, Emile Henry, and Sante Geronimo Casario were European exemplars of, quote, propaganda by the deed, unquote. The Suicide's Defense of all the stupidities wherewith the law-making power has signaled its own incapacity for dealing with the disorders of society, none appear so utterly stupid as the law which punishes an attempted suicide. To the question, what have you to say in your defense, I conceive the poor wretch might reply as follows. To say in my defense. Defense of what? Defense to whom? And why defense at all? Have I wronged any? Let that one accuse. Some priest there mutters, I have outraged God. Let God then try me, and let none dare judge himself as fit to put the heaven's ermine on. Again I say, let the wronged one accuse. I, silence, that is none to answer me, and whom could I, a homeless, friendless tramp, to whom all doors are shut, all hearts are locked, all hands withheld, whom could I wrong indeed by taking that which benefited none and menaced all? Ay, since ye will it so, know then your risk. But mark, tis not defence, tis accusation that I hurl at you. See to it that ye prepare your own defence. My life, I say, is an eternal threat to you and yours, and therefore it were well to have forborne your unasked services. And why? Because I hate you. Every drop of blood that circles in your plethoric veins was wrung from out the gaunt and sapless trunks of men like me, who in your cursed mills were crushed like grapes within the wine-pressed ground. To us ye leave the empty skin of life, the heart of it, the sweet of it, 
ye poor to feed your dogs and mistresses with all your mistresses, our daughters, bought for bread to grace the flesh that once was father's arm. Yes, I accuse you that ye murdered me. Ye killed the man, and this that speaks to you is but the beast that ye have made of me. What? Is it life to creep and crawl and beg and slink for shelter where rats congregate and for one's ideal dream of a fat meal? Is it then life to group like pigs in styes and bury decency in common filth? Because forsooth your income must be made, though human flesh rot in your plaguery dens. Is it then life to wait another's nod for leave to turn yourself to gold for him? Would it be life to you? And was I less than you? Was I not born with hopes and dreams and pains and passions even as you were? But these ye have denied, ye seized the earth, though it was none of yours, and said, Hereon shall none rest, walk or work, till first to me ye tender tribute. Every art of man born to make light of the burdens of the world, ye also seized and made a tenfold curse to crush the man beneath the thing he made. Houses, machines, and lands, all, all are yours. And us you do not need when we ask work. You shake your heads. Homes, ye evict us. Bread. Here, officer, this fellow's begging. Jail's the place for him. After the stripes, what next? Poison. I took it. Now you say twas sin to take this life which troubled you so much. Sin to escape insult is starvation, brands of felony, inflicted for the crime of asking food. Ye hypocrites! Within your secret hearts the sin is that I failed, because I failed ye judge me to the stripes, and the hard toil denied when I was free. So be it, but beware, a prison sells, an evil bed to grow morality. Black swamps breed black miasmas. Sickly soils yield poison fruit. Snakes warm to life will sting. This time I was content to go alone. Perchance the next I shall not be so kind. Philadelphia.